Hello everyone and welcome to our 4K breakdown and analysis of absolutely everything from the trailer. I have enhanced the original trailer with AI software to 4K and even 8K to have a better look and see even more detail so we can try to find anything that may have been missed. Just as we have done with our previous Tears of the Kingdom breakdowns. And yes, we will be uploading the full 4K and 8K 60 frames per second enhanced trailer later today or tomorrow with a comparison to the original. But you'll still be able to see a lot of the close-ups with added details in this video. Here is a couple of small scenes for comparison. While I'm showing these scenes, if you're a fan of videos like this, please consider subscribing and give this video a like. I know it's annoying to hear, but it really does help out a lot. I will also be making a follow-up video to this one in the chance that we did leave anything out. If you notice anything that we did miss, please comment below and let us know. We will give you a shout out and credit you when we include it in our next video. Thank you. It begins with rain and a lightning storm with a view of Death Mountain off in the distance and malice flowing from it. In the middle we see the green spiral of light and malice coming from the ground, which we see both of all throughout Hyrule. Next, we have what looks like new enemies or a mix of gecko enemies and Korgoroks above the area that used to contain a Sheikah Tower. Here we have glowing lights on two towers with this glowing mark in the middle that we may have seen in previous trailers. I do wonder if these towers will act as the Sheikah Towers did or maybe a new version of the Zonai Towers from the concept artwork. We also see this mysterious giant tornado from the artwork. Here we have a view of the edge of a sky island and a moving platform beneath it with a red glowing light. Next, do you know where this spot is? We have a section of Hyrule that looks completely different, being flooded with malice everywhere, and new versions of Lazalfos and of course Bacoblins. We see these blue lights, or whatever they are, to the right of the screen. And if we look in the background, we see a giant, twisting tree with a glowing, yellow, possibly hollow ball in the middle. And of course, we begin to hear Ganondorf's voice, which I think is actually the same voice actor who played King Rome in Breath of the Wild and Age of Clams. As most voice actors who worked on Breath of the Wild and Age of Clams voiced two or more roles. Now this is awesome. A three-headed dragon, which I think looks like a flaming glee rock on the bridge of Hylia and another green shining light way off in the background. Here is a view of Hatino Village, very much a contrast to the original trailer, which showed this. We have another spiraling light. And now the camera's positioned behind Link on a bridge looking up at the Blood Moon, which is followed by a direct close-up of the Blood Moon before Malice comes shooting out, just like the Blood Moon of the previous games. However, just as how we had in Breath of the Wild what now seems like a weakened Calamity Ganon, sending power out to all of the enemies to power them up, or if, like in the Guardian's case, possess or take control of them, here in Tears of the Kingdom we have an even more powerful Ganondorf sending Malice out to corrupt them and make them even more powerful. In this ball of Malice hitting something we don't see, it appears to sort of have the overall shape of a Lynel, but it has Guardian-like tentacles appearing all around it. As we know from Calamity Ganon's final form in Breath of the Wild and his Harbinger form in Age of Clams, Ganon, or Calamity Ganon, can take on many different variations, or forms. So this could just be another new form, which is why we don't see the outcome of this transformation. Next we see Molten Rock and Lava Falling, which could be a giant stone talus, much larger than the version in Death Mountain during the DLC of Breath of the Wild, or it could be a section of Death Mountain or another area falling due to the earthquake and giant sections of Hyrule we see rising and falling from the sky due to Ganondorf. The next scene is of Hyrule Castle and the land it sits on breaking apart and rising into the sky, similar to the ending scene from a previous trailer. However, unlike the last scene, which had rocks falling, we could clearly see lava. Here, we don't see that, only red specks of calamity. Next, we see a callback to one of the original Breath of the Wild trailers, showing a sweeping view of the Great Plateau. However, this time, we can see the world is taken over by malice, again, a direct contrast to the bright and vibrant peacefulness of the original. We have small spots of calamity spewing out of the ground, with one of the green glowing outlines close to the center of the frame, the temple.
couple of times is in the background as well. Next we have the Malice falling onto the Moblins and empowering them. We see they are floating up in the sky before being hit and dropping back down. However, it seems they already have their larger horns here, though we do see a different version later on. Here we have a much larger Bacoblin, which we also have artwork for. They are almost the size of Hinoxes and have this crown of horns, with large weapons like the Hinox use, but also different types of weapons as well. Maybe they will actually work alongside the smaller Bacoblins instead of using them as weapons, as the Hinox hilariously did. Next we have the Lazalfos being hit by the Malice, and to its right we have what looks like a Redead even taking a similar design to the versions found in Ocarina of Time, as well as its mask. Next we have Link riding on Epona through Hyrule. Now, this is a bit of a theory of mine that I posted in a video a long time ago. I still believe we will be able to bring most of our stuff from the original Breath of the Wild over to this new game. So, if you have Epona unlocked with an amiibo and saved at a stable, or you have items on your wall in Link's house, you will be able to transfer your save file to the new game and continue using the same items on your wall or in the stable, and maybe even depending on if you unlocked Terrytown, it may also appear. I have this video going more in depth on it if you would like to see. And this is something Breath of the Wild has already done with its prequel, Hyrule Warriors Age of Clams. So there is a history of Nintendo doing similar stuff. Although in Age of Clams, instead of carrying over items, you would just simply be rewarded with this weird bonus item, which is kind of more like a joke than anything. <laughs> this is Gerudo Desert or Canyon. They put a focus on this small shed-like thing in the center of the screen, and the next scene, I believe, shows the inside of this place, and it seems to belong to the Sheikah. Yes, it could be Yiga, but I think the Yiga would be the type to remove the stickers or posters of the Sheikah symbol, turn them upside down, and put them back in the same spot just to be extra edgy, like we know Yiga to be. The other designs also look similar to what we see appearing around other Sheikah members when using their magic during Breath of the Wild and Age of Clams. The next scene, we have a better look at the giant Bacoblin blowing a horn and alerting a pack of smaller Bacoblins, though these Bacoblins are different, as mentioned earlier, containing a single horn that splits into two, almost reminding me of a beetle. Next we have Link running away from a Hinox, very reminiscent of this cutscene from the first trailer of Twilight Princess, with Link running away from Goma but is also shot from in front of Link with the monster behind him running through a cave. Instead of a large horn, it looks like this Hinox is wearing a stump or a log with spikes around it, almost funnily looking like a top hat. He has what looks like a beard made of sharp spikes, which I imagine makes it more difficult to walk on him and grab the item hanging from his neck. Next we have a zooming camera, very similar to this shot of a previous trailer, again very much to show contrast between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Link is jumping off and gliding across Thunder Plateau, but to the top right we see a large cloud of dust or smoke around this mountain. Here we have Link on Epona riding across Hyrule Field with much more grass than I remember from the original. Which is interesting, because with each blade blowing in the wind, it's something the original Breath of the Wild would have issues with and cause the game to drop frame rate and resolution on both Wii U and the Switch. Which, we know this game is being made specifically for the Switch, and is actually able to take full advantage of the system as opposed to Breath of the Wild, which was originally designed specifically for the Wii U. Next, we have a Bacoblin being carried by one of the new versions of a Korgorok, or at least what I'll just call a Korgorok from now on, although it is possibly something completely different or new, as I mentioned earlier. The scene reminds me a lot of Twilight Princess, where Link himself could be carried by one, and especially with all the other flying vehicles, I hope this is kind of a hint that we will have loft wings that we can use to fly around Hyrule. Next we have the Moblins with large spiky helmets. Again, I assume this may be to make headshots a bit harder, especially with them having much larger heads than normal enemies. Off in the distance, we see this structure on top of the mountain to the right. Do you remember this from Breath of the Wild? What do you think it is? This is a completely new enemy, made entirely of sections of crates or box-like parts, with what most of us are thinking are Zonai-related symbols and colors. I imagine we will see several different variations of this boss or enemy, having these Zonai boxes in different shapes or variations. On Link's waist, we can see the same vials or Zonai tiers from the previous trailer and artwork. I think he even has the same number of vials, so this could take place around the same time in the game as those scenes. Here we have Zombie Ganondorf coming back to life with a large pool of malice coming from his chest. 
Next is a scene I think is a bit later on, as he doesn't have the malice on his chest now, but is in the same location from the original teaser trailer, and what I assume is causing the earthquake we see in all the trailers. Next is a similar scene to the original we seen with his face upside down and waking up, with the same eyes as we always see with the malice. And I think this trailer shows a few different variations of older Tears of the Kingdom scenes. Whether the final game has both, or Nintendo is just showing new versions of those old scenes, and how they have changed, I don't know. Here we have a pan around Link's face, and then a shot from behind Link's back. Again, contrasting this previous scene. Though this time, instead of Link being on top of a tower, he is on top of one of the Sky Islands. I think these towers are one of these platforms we see Link with the damaged Master Sword and the glowing golden light, as the light shining below the tower also has the golden light. The Malice coming out here to the right. I want to say this is Death Mountain, and we have the castle directly in front of us. Here we have another beam of light coming from the ground, though not a green spiral. Next we have Link leaping off. Directly in front of him is this Malice spewing from the ground, and up and to the right is a beam of light around this tower which is again where I think these scenes will take place. Next we have Link running alongside a big hill, or canyon. We can see one of the giant green glowing symbols in the background, taking up a large section of land. However, this time it's not glowing. To the far left, we can see this large tower-like structure. I don't know what it is, but what do you think? Here we have Link using a new type of arrow, possessing possibly a similar green power to what he uses with his arm. I'm not sure. But this special arrow does have a homing or targeting effect, maybe using the magic to do so. Even though Link clearly shoots the arrow away from the enemy, it still locks on, goes directly to it, and gives a one-hit kill. The important thing to remember here is that Link will likely still be able to get bows, which allow him to shoot three, and possibly even more arrows at once, like in Breath of the Wild and Skyward Sword. So would these arrows target three different enemies, or would all three arrows go straight to the same enemy? In the background, we can see what looks like a cave in the middle of this mountain, on the very top as well. And to the left is an area that I think actually might be very interesting, that I'll get to in another video. Next we have Link shield surfing down one of the mineshaft rails on the outside of this mountain, and what looks to be a larger Moblin or Bacoblin fortress. We have what looks like a new type of rock or ore to the right, and below it we have this mystery item. What do you think they are? Here we have Link using what is probably similar to Magnesis and the shrines where we controlled the motion of some of the mechanical puzzles, this time using the abilities from his hand instead of the Sheikah Slate. Although instead of the typical green or yellow from his hand, here we see it's blue. The puzzle itself has runes all around it, which my friend Zoe will be deciphering and translating the Zonai text, just as she did for me in these past videos. So we'll look forward to all of that in a new video. Maybe this mechanical puzzle is used, used to access the area right in front of him. This may be to spin the bridge-like platform 98 degrees from the right side to in front of Link, giving him a way to cross. Kind of like the wind bridges in Twilight Princess's Forest Temple. Next we have Link in an underground cave, fighting a stone talus with what looks like a new weapon, a staff or spear with a dragon's head attached to it, and launching a sphere or some kind of bomb that explodes on impact. The overall design very much matches what we know to be Zonai, and this item equipped to Link's shield, blowing fire from this trailer. Here we have a mystery character that I think is either Zelda fully embracing the powers of Hylia, or the spirit of Hylia herself, which I also believe to be the person Zelda is asking to help Link and share their powers with him. She is holding this item with very Zonai-like designs, and then reaching out for Link. This may be where Link actually gets his yellow powers we see, such as him able to reverse time and what I think is this golden light which helps restore or power up the Master Sword and possibly restore his arm. Here we see Link after what I believe is him first noticing the gauntlet on his hand, or after gaining a new ability to use with it. But at this point, we still don't see that green glow from other scenes, like we do here. So I think this is towards the beginning of the game, and again on his waist we only see four vials. Here we have Link using the Magnesis-like ability again to pick up a Zonai Tire from this pond on the Great Plateau, or at least what we think is a Zonai Tire. The pond seems to be poisonous, based on the dark color and bubbles rising from it. To the top left we can see more red malice coming from the water, and a new type of chest on this pillar. Here we have a new vehicle, Link has presumably used that green tire to construct this vehicle with the Zonai Dragon's Head on the front two wheels. 
and it even includes two headlights. In the far background, we can see this mountain with an almost perfect circle going through it. This hot air balloon, which reminds me a lot of the balloon platforms we see all over the DLC of Heroes Mode, lifting up all of the enemies in the sky, and even in the original version when you attach the guts to an item to make it float. But now they're actually giving us a hot air balloon, which seems to be held together by this green goo which we'll see next. The next scene, we have a completely different vehicle. Once again, looking like it is glued or held together by this green glowing goo, which keeps these four fans attached to the platform to allow it to fly. In the background, we can see a lot of small islands and two large ones, but the one to the right has these long strings or ropes going down. Perhaps Link could use them to climb up and down, Although it's most likely just waterfalls flowing over, like we have seen previously, but we have actually also seen ropes that look like they may act as zip lines, so I don't know. But I'm going to go with waterfalls for these two. This flying mechanical vehicle also makes me think that loft wings will be a bonus in the game. After all, now I don't think people can complain that it would ruin the game, as we already have various different ways of flying around. Next, we have Link riding on Epona, once again, through Hyrule Field. We see a structure of some kind right in the middle, with what looks like a stable to its left, and Malice coming out of the ground, even further to the left. We also have this green rock falling from the sky, and as we get closer, we see a green glow from behind the center structure. Perhaps it is these rocks that will allow Link to reverse back into the sky, as we see in this scene. Next, we have Link in what looks like it is close to this scene, when it looks like Malice is first spewing from Ganondorf's chest, but from a different angle. As Link's sword always does, it is glowing near the Malice, but it also looks like he has already had an encounter with some kind of Malice, as his arm and sword are already damaged. Perhaps it is between this scene of Link first being attacked by the Malice, and this one with Malice fully erupting from Ganondorf's chest. As we already know, Link's arm is completely fine when he and Zelda first reach Ganondorf. So we know it had to take place before this. And we can even see little clouds of malice here close to Link beside his arm. Here I believe Link has either thrown or dropped the Master Sword after trying to hold back the malice with it, which may have finally broken it as we see in this scene. We also see the Malice has corrupted his arm all the way from his fingers to his shoulder and half of his side. However, I think this bracelet or gauntlet, whatever you want to call it, he gets is actually used to help his arm heal, which is why when we see him wearing it, the damage has already began to heal on the upper arm and shoulder. It actually reminds me a lot of Dumbledore in Harry Potter and the curse he had on his hand. I think as we progress through the game and complete different dungeons, shrines, or temples, whatever this game has, and especially these scenes with the golden light, Link's arm will gradually heal throughout the game. I also think Ganondorf, like in the movie The Mummy, will also gradually recover to his true form throughout the game. Literally just like the mummy in the movie, Ganondorf will go from this dehydrated mess to his true self, which we have already sort of seen concept art for, and it even has him standing on top of a floating island, looking like his Twilight Princess self. Then, Link takes a few steps before leaping over the edge to try and grab Zelda. It seems this was just on reflexes alone, and he didn't even think that after catching her, he likely wouldn't be able to save either of them, which in a bittersweet way just makes me happy. His natural instincts is just to be a hero. It actually gives a different view of this scene of Link grabbing Zelda's hand, but perhaps this scene is actually just an earlier scene of Zelda falling, because this is his right hand, which isn't damaged yet like it is in the new scene. This is also the same pose we originally seen of Zelda falling, but now from a side view wide shot, and they are both much further away from the rock wall than in the original scene. Thank you all so much for watching the video, and please, if you made it this far, consider subscribing and commenting below. It really does help us out. Hello everyone, I just want to say thank you for watching the video all the way through. Some of you have been asking, and yes, we still have shirts and other merch available at teespring.com. You can find a link in the description below. If you purchase one and send us a picture wearing it, we will give you a shout out and include your picture during one of our upcoming videos. Thank you to our amazing Patreon supporters, starting off with our royal family, Shadow to Us. On our champion tier, Justin Clark, Monica Spath, Sober X, In the Sheikah Tier, Andre Moy, Joseph, Natsu, Wrecker One, Rusty Caulfield, 
Tremel, and in the Kukiri tier, Jean Pinna, Chad Costin, David Guthman, Candy, Disappointment, Gus Calvo, Zane, Lean, Lovable Christie, Mr. Monocled Metroid, and whoever this is only donated to hear Jesse speak my name. Thank you all so, so much. If any of you would like your name to be featured at the end of any of our videos or to get a shout out at the beginning of our Zelda podcast, the Hylian Gamescast, and to have any of your topics or questions answered or turned into a full video to be featured here on our channel, along with many other things, please join our Patreon and help support the channel. Thank you all so much. Happy Halloween.